Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 class. Today we are going to continue talking about factoring trinomials. And today's a very easy, easy extension of yesterday's method. In fact, they're almost identical. There are literally just two different things that we're going to do. Okay? I call this the Cuban method because little old Cuban guy taught me how to do this. Yeah. I was doing it a much more complicated way. Most books show you a much more complicated way to do this. Please, do not follow the book's way. The book usually has a very complicated way to do this. A lot of guessing and checking and testing. My way pretty much eliminates that. So let's get right to it. Today we're going to factor trinomials in the form of AX squared plus BX. Remember yesterday, the A was 1. It was just x squared plus bx plus c. Today, you're going to have an actual value greater than 1, or maybe less than 1. Maybe it's a negative. You're going to have a value in front of that x squared. Yes, sir? No, in the last two problems of the first quiz, what I did was you had a value in front of A, but you factored out that value with a GCF. In this case, do I have a greatest common factor that I can factor that 6 out of? No. So this is what we're going to be working with today. So step one, the procedures go as follows. You're set up. Just like last time, remember how last time you put x and x? This time, you're going to put ax, ax. So you're going to have 6x, 6x. 6 is your a. Please put them in both. I know what some of you are thinking. Moro, you're wrong. 6 times 6 is 36. I know. Trust me. It's a trick. Trust me. I promise you, you're going to love this. So step one, AX, AX, period. Does that make sense? Step two, this is one of the different things. Multiply the A value times the C value to give me a new C value. So in this case, A times C in this case is 42. 42 is now your new C value. Does that make sense, my brothers? Guys? Okay. Step three. Just like before. But this time, instead of using the original C, you're using the new C. What times what equals the new C, but when added together, equals the B. So tell me, guys, what times what equals 42, but when added together is 23? What times what is 42, but when added together is 23? Okay, 21 times 2, good job. 21 times 2 is 42. 21 plus 2 is 23. And now, just like before, step 4, plug it in. So I have 6x plus 21 and 6x plus 2. We're almost done. But before I continue, I want to make sure everyone understands. Your setup, AX times AX. Okay? Step two, find the new C. A times C gives you a new C. In this case, it's 42. Step three, what times what equals the new C, but when added together equals the original B? 21 times 2 equals 42. 21 plus 2 equals 23. Step four, plug in the answers into your setup. Step five, imaginary factoring. Let me explain what that means. I have taught you already that if you have a GCF, for example, here the GCF is three. I've taught you to put the three out here and then have the leftovers, correct? Okay. You're going to do the same exact thing, except it's imaginary factoring. So I'm not going to put the 3 outside. Can I take a factor out of 6x plus 2? Yeah, I can take a 2 out. 
but I just write down the leftovers. I do not show this two, and I do not show that three. This is imaginary factoring. So I only imaginary factor when I'm using the Cuban method. So when do I imaginary factor? When I'm using the Cuban method. When do I imaginary factor? When I'm using the Cuban method. Is that the only time I imaginary factor? Yes. Only when I'm using the Cuban method. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I just talked to you about imaginary factoring. Didn't, didn't, didn't I just go over this? If you were to factor out a GCF, don't you normally put the GCF outside of the leftovers? Isn't that what I taught you? But we are doing imaginary factoring. So you're not going to put the GCF outside. Doesn't 3 go into 6 and 21? That's a GCF. So you're imaginary factoring. What's the GCF of 6 and 2? Okay. You're only going to write the leftovers because you're imaginary factoring. You are not going to put those GCFs out here. You are not. When do you imaginary factor? When you're using the Cuban method. Is that the only time I imaginary factor? Yes. yes. That is the only time, my brothers. Does that make sense? So my answer will be to make it nice and pretty. Boom. 2x plus 7 times 3x plus 1. Now, just so you know what I'm saving you from, the book, or any book for that matter, most teachers as well, would go ahead and teach it like this. The factors of 6 could be 2x times 3x or um, 6x and 1x. Then the factors of 7. I can have a 2x plus 7 and a 3x plus 1 or I can have a 2x plus 1 and a 3x plus 7. Or I can have a 6x plus 7 times a 6x plus 1. Or I can have a 6x plus 1 times a uh, 1x plus 7. Then you're supposed to multiply all of these and see which one gives you the original value. Do you like my way better? A lot better, isn't it? This is way confusing. And these are easy numbers. What happens when you have a number that has like five factors? Sometimes you have to test 15 or 10 binomials, and that's a pain. So let's practice, because practice makes perfect. So let's do this, my brothers. 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. First things, set up. Excellent, 3x, 3x. Step 2, multiply the a times the c and get a new c of 6. Step 3, what times what is 6, but when added together is 5? Positive 2 and positive 3. You can't have a negative 1 because negative 1 times 6 is not positive 6. Can I imaginary factor anything from this guy? No. Can I imaginary factor anything from this guy? Yes. A 3. So I have 3x plus 2 because I couldn't factor anything. And I have an x plus 1. Do I put the 3 out here? No. no because it's an imaginary factoring. It's a trick. This is a trick. Does that make sense, my brothers? But it's pretty easy, isn't it? Pretty simple. Okay, next. First of all, look at that. I always have trained you guys to please factor out GCFs if possible. Do I have a GCF? Now, is this an imaginary factoring? No. Very good, guys. This is a legitimate factor. Now, we're going to do the Cuban method. But that 2, that GCF from the original stays. So I got 2x, 2x. 2 times negative 3 is? Um, negative 6. That's my new C. What times what is my new C of negative 6? But when added together is negative 1. Um, negative 
negative 3, and positive 2. Can I artificial factor anything from here? Can I artificial factor anything from here? A 2. So I have a 2 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. Do I have to add this to my outside? No, because it's an imaginary factor. But this first two that I pulled out, that was not part of the Cuban method. That was factoring out the GCF. Please be aware of the difference, my friends. Talk to me. Okay, the question was, how do you know when it's a real factor? Okay, was I doing the Cuban method when I factored out a 2 from every term? That's how you know. When is the only time you imaginary factor? At this step right here. That's the only time you will ever imaginary factor. The, the reason why I didn't take out a GCF from the beginning is because there were no GCFs from the beginning. Very good. Good connection. Thank you, sir. Okay, number three. Do I have a GCF that I can factor out of everything? All right, so then let's get right to it. Excellent. 6x, 6x. Six six. Great. 6 times 5 is my new C of 30. What times what is 30, my friends? But when added together, it's 13. 30. 3 plus 10. Very good. Can I imaginary factor something from here? A 3. And from here? A 2. So I'm left with 2x plus 1 times 3x plus 5. Do I take these guys out and put them up here? No. no. Why? Because it's imaginary factoring. This is the only time ever in math that you will do an imaginary factoring. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, good. Thank you, my brothers. Next, can I take something out of here? What can I take out of here? Actually, let's make it a little bit better. Let's make this a negative 6. I never want an x squared with a negative in front of it. So with that, being in my, with that being said, what should I factor out of everything here? No. If I factor out a 2, I'm still having a negative. Factor out a negative 2. Is that an imaginary factor? No. So now I'm left with 3x squared minus 13x minus 12. Wait. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. Right? I did. Okay. Now, let's factor. 3x, 3x. 3 times negative 12, my new C is negative 36. Be careful, my brothers. What times what is negative 36, but when added together is negative 13? Good job. Negative 9. And, oh, actually, wait. No. Negative 9 and negative 4, that's not positive 36. No, that's no good. What else? 12 and 3, that's not going to make it work. 6 and 6 is not going to make it work. Um, guess what? No, it's not prime. Why is it not prime? Because I factored out a negative 2, but it will be just 3x squared minus 13x. Minus 12. That's it. You cannot factor that any further. Yeah, because 4 and 9, one of them has to be negative, so it's not going to be negative 13. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? No. So let's get to it. AX, AX. Negative 14. What times what is, is negative 14, but when added together is negative 13. Negative 14 and positive 1. Great. Can I artificial factor from here? Yes, yes a 2. So I'm going to be left with x minus 7. Pull this 2. And last but not least, can I factor out a GCF here? Yes. Well, guess what, guys? When you factor out a GCF, you're not even left with the Cuban method. Factoring. 
So this is x and x. What times what? 7. Positive. Go ahead and make sure to practice. Okay. I'll get to your question in one second. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you very much, and have a great day.